Today on Slinging Paint, we're going to take a look at the miniatures that come in IDW's Planet of the Apes game. So, stay tuned, and we'll get right back to you. Welcome to Slinging Paint. I'm your host, James, the Paint Slinger, and we're going to take a look at IDW's Planet of the Apes game. Now, it doesn't come with too many miniatures, it only comes with four, uh, but we're going to paint them up just to make the game look and be a little bit more exciting when you do play. Uh, first up, we're going to take a look at one of the, one of the apes, or well, the only ape that comes in the game. Um, and then there's the Statue of Liberty, or what's left of her. The rocket ship. And last but not least, Charlton Heston's character. You know. So first off, you know, they're... A fairly decent plastic looks like they're like an ABS plastic like most miniatures are but unfortunately there's not a lot of the there's not a lot of detail on these things like uh, I mean there's a fair bit but the gun is almost completely and utterly devoid of any details whatsoever and that's okay I mean, it's not like you're going to make an army of apes, although that would be super cool. Yeah. You can actually have your Planet of the Apes and have all kinds of different apes and, you know, the different types of apes. That would be kind of neat. But that's not what this game is about. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get right into it. We're going to prime these guys up and we're going to start painting. So let's grab our paints, our brushes, and our primer and get right to it. Hi, welcome back. So, um, I've just gone ahead and primed our miniatures from the uh, Planet of the Apes game and I've given them already a start of a base color. So, again, I'm not sure how well these will pick up, but I've done a nice dark green for our Lady Liberty and we'll, you know, work her up with, uh, with a couple of other greens because Lady Liberty's green. Um, I've gone on to you know google and stuff like that to try and find some of the old colors for the or the colors for the old uh planet of the apes ape soldiers so uh, again these just really aren't showing up but you can kind of see that i got kind of a dark brown for the pants and sleeves of the tunic and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do a little bit of highlight grays on the uh on the outer uniform and uh we'll go from there uh, now the Charlton Heston character is actually portrayed in his spacesuit, so I've already given him a base coat of a gray, and then we're going to build up, uh, and we're going to try and get some get some white in there, like I did with the, uh, a couple of the last miniatures that we did. And then lastly is the spaceship, and I primed that one white because all we're really going to do to that one is give it a little bit of shadow, a little bit of shade, and then there's two little stripes right here and we're going to give it some color color in the base and pretty much call it done uh, again these aren't super detailed miniatures these aren't something that you're going to necessarily want to showcase but adding a little bit of color adding a little bit of uh, pizzazz to the miniatures when you open up the box be like hey these are kind of cool um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go right ahead and we're going to start with Lady, Lady Liberty uh, so the color that I used was uh, Caliban green which is a base color which is a base coat color from my Citadel range and probably then what we're gonna do is we're gonna build up to using the what's called the Wah flesh uh, again part of the Citadel range uh, and what we're gonna learn what we're gonna do is here is we're gonna do just a neat little technique nice easy fast uh, it's called dry brushing 
Now, probably a lot of you out there know what dry brushing is, but for those of us who don't, uh, dry brushing is just literally, is literally that. Just take a little bit of the paint, get it on your brush, you're going to wipe most of it back off, and then you're just going to flick over the surface of the miniature, and all you're going to do is you're just going to catch the highlights, and it's a nice fast way to add shade and highlight to your miniature. And uh, you'll see here in a minute how, how it's kind of worked itself up. Now, you know, if you want to, uh, you can actually go and go in and layer, actually paint, paint in all the highlights, paint in your low lights, and so on and so forth. But again, I, like I said, these aren't necessarily world-class miniatures that you're going to want to put in a showcase kind of thing. But they they are kind of cool to 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 paint up and have that extra little extra little bit of something when you when you pull this game off the sh off the shelf to give it a go you know, all your friends will be like wow that's cool and you're like yeah I painted these myself and now they look super wicked cool okay so my first layer was the wall flesh you can kind of see all I'm really doing is just flicking the brush back and forth. Just trying to catch those, those high points on the, on the robes. You can kind of see now how the detail is actually starting to come out. So what we can do is we can use the wall flash and we can continue continue to build it up until we're satisfied with the color and then we can go on to a different shade of green and bring it up even more and this one the next one that we'll do is will be just a slightly lighter dry brush to help catch the just the more raised areas and not you know get it all the way down inside all of the little little crevices there we go so we'll call that we'll call that layer done wash off our brush. The next color that we're going to go to is Warpstone, sorry, Warpstone Glow. Always give your paints a little bit of a shake. Start off. Get the brush in. Again, you're going to be wiping most of it, most of it back off onto a piece of paper towel or whatever it is that you have handy and now we're going to go back in and we are just going to catch the more raised surfaces and, you know again this is all dependent on you you can go in and Spend all the time you want making making these miniatures as detailed as you want. You don't have to paint them at all. You can leave them the, the gray color when they that they were when they came out of the box. You can try and make each one a personal little work of art. 
by adding all the high all the highlights all the shades whatever you like to do the, the best rule of thumb is that these are your miniatures and make them however you want There we go. Let's see if that helps at all. Kind of see how the how we picked out the the details. Uh, you know, if you actually look at pictures of Lady Liberty and on Staten Island, you'll see that she's kind of a copper green color. Maybe a bit of blue undertone. Yeah, for the most part, I think she looks good. She looks nice and aged. You know, we've got the nice dark crevices, dark color on the crevices. And we've added the nice light greens as we built her up. You know, so, except for doing some of the sand and other debris that's around her base. The main portion of her is done. Which is nice. Again, clean off your brush. Let's see, for Mr. Heston here, again, we've just done a base. Just kind of a, done a base color gray uh, for him. Uh, we haven't done any of the skin tones or anything yet. All we've done is just given him a quick base coat of celestial gray. I think what I'm going to do is to help pick out some of the details. This guy, I'm going to give him a bit of a wash so what we're going to do is we're going to take null oil and we're just going to kind of wash down and muddy up his uniform and what it should do in theory is sit itself down in the in the cracks and in the low-lying areas of the miniature It'll help bring up some of the details too. And then once this dries, we're going to go back in. Actually, we'll probably go over it with our Oathly Gray and just start building up. Building up the, the highlights. Again, these are you know not something that you need to spend a whole lot of time on. You could throw on the gray, throw on a skin tone, maybe a brown for his hair. Call it done. Uh, but we're gonna go into a little bit more detail with this one. Uh, and then we have our ape. Now the ape, I'm pretty much going to leave as he is, at least for some of the skin tone, or some of the, uh, some of the uniforming. But what we're going to do is we're going to take Skaven Blight Dinge, give it a bit of a shake, there we go. And all we're going to do is we're just going to use our small, nah, we're not going to use our small dry brush. We're going to use my favorite, the medium layer brush. And we're going to almost use that one as 
as a dry brush. So we're just going to wet down the brush a little bit as I already have. Grab some of the scab and bite dinge. And we're just going to do a little, just a little bit. To help bring up some of the details that is. On his tunic. Nothing, you know, nothing crazy. It just helps bring out some of the details that are that are there. See that he's got a backpack on, so maybe we'll make the the backpack a, a brown color or something like that. You see, this is where they seem to put things on that I don't remember in the movie. So we're just gonna go with it and see where it, see where see where the colors take us. See what we feel like in the moment. Uh, But I do know that I want a smaller brush to say do the straps. And the straps we're going to do a more a more frank brown. It's actually more of a more of a true brown or a lighter. It's a lighter brown color at any rate. Take some of that out. Put that on our palette. Now I've switched to my small base because it has a slightly finer point on it than my medium layer brush. Which is kind of what we want in a situation like this because we're dealing with thin straps. Actually, you know what? Let's even do the gun the same color, because the gun is pretty much an all. Looks like it was an almost all wood uh, construction in the movie, so not a lot of metal or working parts, which is kind of interesting. I'm just going to take the same brown as the straps. Give the gun a one over. There we go. So we can already see that the ape is taking up. Uh, she's taking up quite a what a new look. Oh, I forgot to do the boots. That's okay. We'll go back and do the boots later. No big deal. Now, if we want to, we can take the same brown and we can actually do the straps on Mr. And we'll do that later after we get the highlights and stuff like that built in. Now, if we take a look at the box art, because I haven't really been able to find any pictures online about the spaceship, but if we take a look at the box art right here, 
you can see the spaceship basically has two little lines on it a red one and a blue one and that's really all we're going to do we're just going to do a red stripe a blue stripe maybe maybe hit it with uh with a little bit of shade and pretty much call it done I've gone ahead and I've painted most of the miniatures. It's just going to be a quick little dry brush here and there. So as you can see, uh, I've gone ahead and I've done the straps and I've blackened up the backpack uh, for the uh, for the guy. Uh, a nice gray for the backpack on the on the on the ape, and you know, kind of did his, did the face as well. Uh, let's see if we can get it to focus in. Eh, not terrible, but not great. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're just going to do a couple little bit of dry brushes and uh, uh, we still have the the stripes on the spaceship to do. Well, that's really about it. And then we're going to call these guys done. I know I said last video that we were going to be done, but uh, I just had a few things and I figured I'd show them show them off to you. So let's just go ahead and figure out what we are going to do uh, for for the stripes and for for the dry brushes. Uh, so then then we'll easily be able to call this done. So I think a nice, relatively bright red for the striping on the uh, on the spaceship, and then a relatively bright blue will look just great. And I said with these ones here again, I'm not going to get real fancy. I'm not going to, you know, go in and do a lot of highlighting and and. Uh, stuff like that mostly because these aren't uh, you know I mean there's they still are miniatures but they're not like a war game miniature or something like that where you want to take a lot of time and put in the effort and put in the work to to get your detail out of them uh, this is just adding a little bit of character and a little bit of flair to the pieces that come in. I mean these are perfectly acceptable to play play with unpainted but that'd be kind of fun just to give it a little bit of extra something. You know, when you open up your board game, you can look at these pieces and go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember doing those. They're pretty good, don't they? Everybody can ooh and ah. You can go, yeah, that's right. And people are like, wow, you did that yourself? And you're like, yep, painted them, painted them up all myself. Look pretty good. People are like, heck yeah, they do. And they'll add just a little bit of flash and a little bit of personality to the to the game board. So in that time there, I've already done the red. You know, and again, you can go in and take as much time as you want. If you want, you can add shades, you can add highlights, you can add you know, whatever you'd like. The, you know, the set's your set. You do with it as you wish. 
So we're finished with the red. Now we're going to move on to... Let's pick a good blue, what do you say? Yeah, I think this is a pretty good blue. Actually, this blue is almost the same blue as the water. Uh, I have such a wide variety of blues just kicking around. You know what? That's fine. I'll just use the same blue. I hope it will anyway. And if need be, we'll find a different blue and go back over and lighten it up. But so far, I'm kind of liking how it looks. And because the spaceship has molded, uh, molded lines where your stripes are, so it's a little easier to stay neater, stay in the lines. You know, it doesn't look. half bad and if you take your time go slow following in the lines will be easy peasy and then in no time Your, uh, your stripes will be done. Well, that's really all there is to, to this fella. There you go. The red and blue stripes on the spaceship. All done. Now we're going to get out our our dry brush paints here, our, well, our dry brush and our dry and paints and we're just going to have a little bit of fun, just a quick little swipe of a, of a lighter color on the, uh, there we go, on the, uh, on the water and give it that nice watery look. We're going to take our small dry brush and again and dab most of it back off. And we're just going to give it a quick little over And it's just going to pick out the tops of those waves. Uh, if you start to look, look like water. And if you find you want to make it look a little bit more of a rough sea, then just go, go to a white and just hit the tops. 
tops of those waves with a with a white and we'll really bring those waves to life I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up really well, but as you can see, I've kind of you can you can see the the details anyway of the waves, and all I've done is I've just gone in and I've added a, a very nice light blue color to help pick out the crests of the waves. But you know what? I think a little bit of white, just a, just a little dollop of white right on the right on the crests will just really make things pop or maybe the the gray kind of keep it in that blue tone again we're going to wipe most of it off <coughs> brush over yeah now you can start to see the detail come out it's actually quite nice and out pretty much call that piece done so we're all done with the spaceship super easy Red stripe, blue stripe, get the watercolor in there, piece is done. And now with uh, this fella here, all we're really going to do is we're just going to give the backpack a quick swipe of a, of a dark gray. Not so much to make to turn it into a gray as it is to just bring out the bring out the highlights of the black, you know, catch the corners, catch the you know, catch the raised details. And so all of this is just gonna be a couple quick swipes, just like that down the side. That. Uh, yeah, it's probably not going to pick it up. Well, um, for the ape, uh, his backpack, uh, we're just going to pick an even lighter gray than what we've already than what we have, uh, and then we're just going to. Give it a couple quick swipes, and that'll be that. As a matter of fact, actually, you can even use uh, a blue or, uh, believe it or not, a uh, these are a dark reaper. It's gonna be. It'll be a little bit different. If I can find, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. It's called Dawnstone. It's a nice light gray. It'll help pick out the tones. Of the, uh, of the backpack. But it's a dead, so we'll have to find something different. Don't use your paints on a regular basis, they begin to dry out. And then you have to go out and replace them. And again, we're just going to give it a quick swipe. Kind of catch those edges. 
you know, and the backpack is actually fairly round, so there's not a lot of edges to catch. But that's okay. I still catch the edges. Well, what edges there are? I'm kind of I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's you know. Kind of see that I, some of the details have started to come out, and we're you know pretty much going to call him done too. And then, lovely Lady Liberty, you can see that we've built her up, you know, a bunch of greens and stuff like that. I've gone in and added some grays to what looks like stone, and since it's kind of a sandy beach, we're going to use that same that same color and we're just going to give it a dry brush so then it looks like it's covered with covered with uh, sand in the crevices and for the most part that is them so we are going to call this set finished yay and uh see if I can get you a, a kind of a decent looking picture. So we're going to turn it around. There you go. Now they're a little bit better in focus and you can kind of see the different colors that are coming up out of them. Anyway, that's the uh, Planet of the Ape miniatures from the Planet of the Apes games by IDW Games. Uh, you can probably find it at your local brick and mortar store. Anyway, have fun. Paint safe out there, everyone. Catch you later.